And so this gives us what's called flow-mediated dilation, or FMD. And normal is about 8 to 14 percent. So when it's less than 8 percent, that's really considered uh, endothelial dysfunction or, or injury to those inner lining uh, those cells of the artery wall. So these next two slides then depict, uh, excuse me, depict the studies that looked at endothelial function or vascular health. Uh, needless to say, we're very uh, proud of our study being the first to show improved endothelial function with, with dark chocolate. Uh, but since uh, our study in 2004, there have been a number of other studies done in healthy adults um, as well as in individuals that have cardiovascular risk factors such as high blood pressure and, and smoking. And all have, have really shown similar beneficial improvements in endothelial function or vascular health following dark chocolate with either just one dose or, as you can see here, to a daily dose of around a two-week period, which we used in our study. And again, the patients that, or the subjects in these studies include those that are healthy, those that have high blood pressure, a mild high, high blood pressure, um, and those that are overweight, and those that have had heart transplants that have that accelerated form of atherosclerosis. And if you'll notice in the two studies here on the left, um, Shina and, and Flammer in 2007, they use the coronary artery, which is an even more direct um, view of what's going on in the heart. So they too saw benefit, which was, was quite notable. Okay, well, I thought I would just highlight our study. Uh, we published our clinical trial in the Journal of the American College of Nutrition in 2004. And I have to acknowledge uh, my great team of colleagues here at UCSF and Tufts University in Boston and also our, our super subjects that participated in, in the trial. So our study aims were to determine whether flavonoid-rich dark chocolate consumption would improve blood measurements of oxidative stress, which we talked a lot about today, and endothelial function or that flow-mediated uh, dilation using the brachial artery in, in healthy adults. So the mean age was about 30, 31, 32 with our subjects. And then we wanted to evaluate the effects of flavanol-rich dark chocolate on plasma lipoprotein profiles, or the cholesterol levels, and, and blood pressure. So these are our methods. It was a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled clinical trial. Again, our subjects were healthy adults, 21 men and women, ages 21 to 55. And the intervention, as we saw before, was dark chocolate, flavonoid-rich dark chocolate, with uh, about 46 grams. And we used a low flavanol, which practically had none in it. And it looked exactly the same as the flavanol-rich uh, dark chocolate bar. And we measured flow media di dilation in the brachial artery at baseline and then again at two weeks. So they have this dose every day for, for the two-week period. And then we measured epicatechin, which uh, was a good indication of whether these cocoflavonoids were getting absorbed into the bloodstream. We did three-day records uh, each week, and the subjects also completed a food frequency questionnaire, which gives an indication of, of their habitual diet for the past uh, year. And our primary endpoints, of course, were the FMD, for endothelial function and looking at measures of oxidation. These are the, all the ones that we measured. We also looked at cholesterol and blood pressure and body weight as well. And this was our subject's response. I'll eat anything as long as it's chocolate. So this was our finding, and, and we were really shocked to see the significant difference um, in, in the low flavonoid group on the left. So you can see a baseline. They just really stayed the same after the two-week period of the dark chocolate low flavonoid brand. And then at two weeks after the high flavonoid cho dark chocolate, it absolutely soared uh, with, so that that was really um, validated that the, the subjects were complying and eating their 
their their chocolate and also that it was getting absorbed into the, the bloodstream. And we didn't see any changes in um, either group's cholesterol levels, blood pressure, body weight, uh, or any of those oxidative stress measures that we, we uh, I pointed out, the oxidized, oxidized uh, LDL, the eight isoprostanes are total antioxidant capacity. And, you know, we gave this some thought because um, we were a little bit puzzled that we didn't see any antioxidant effect. And, and what we found compared to some of the other studies that did was that our subjects had higher levels of epicatechin to start with. You can see they're about 17 to 23 um, nanomoles per liter, whereas the other study started at a lower baseline of like 1 to 4 uh, nanomoles per liter. So we think maybe the, the change between uh, the higher level wasn't as great, that perhaps that's why we didn't see an antioxidant effect. But we did see um, improvement in endothelial function, as you can see in this slide here, measuring flow-mediated dilation. Again, this is the low flavonoid uh, chocolate group here at baseline and then at two weeks. And then here in the dark, the high flavonoid dark chocolate group at baseline and then at two-week follow-up. So the mean change was, was significant with the high flavonoid uh, dark chocolate with the improved or um, increased blood flow that we saw with the increase in flow-mediated dilation. And this is why we really believe in, and the studies have confirmed that it's because of the cocoflavanol epicatechin can actually uh, cause the release of nitric oxide. So you can imagine if you have damage in the inner lining of, of the blood vessel that it may be helpful to get more of that nitric oxide in the circulation which will cause more dilation, make the platelets less sticky and less clotting and so this was is kind of a, a figure depicting what's actually happening here so more blood flow as a result with the epicatechin. And this gets into a little bit more vascular biology, and I certainly refer you to our uh, review study, our review article on this in nutrition research. But uh, basically what it's showing is that we're getting more, uh, these cocoflavanols are shown up here, the epicatechin and catechin, that it actually causes more nitric oxide to be produced, more vasodilation, more blood flow, and it can also, uh, inhibit a lot of these oxidative processes that cause free radicals to be generated that would eventually cause injury to that inner lining of, of the arterial wall. So these are our study conclusions. In healthy adults, flavonoid-rich dark chocolate significantly improves endothelial function as compared to the low flavanol group. And we saw a concomitant Elevation in plasma epicatechin without changes in oxidative stress, plasma lipid protein levels or the cholesterol levels, blood pressure or, or body weight. Okay, so we're at the last um, major category of the properties, heart healthy properties that we saw in general with flavonoids and how this applies to the chocolate. So what is the effect of uh, chocolate on inflammation, and that looks pretty inflamed right now, doesn't it? 